All right, last but not least, up until now we have been focused on the first degree, the second degree type 1, and we've also looked at second degree type 2. So now we're going to focus on the very last heart block, and we're going to look at the third degree heart block. So with the third degree heart block, again, we're all about that communication between the atrias and then the ventricles. How are they getting their information down the line so that they can create the proper EKG interpretation or the, the proper EKG for patient care? So it's all about that junction between the atrias and the ventricles and the communication and how those two communicate. Well. With a third degree heart block, there's there's a couple of ways that people, a couple of mnemonics, they say the P's and Q's go marching through with no relation. between the two. So what we're saying here is the atrias are doing their thing, the ventricles are doing their thing, but there is absolutely no communication. This area is completely blocked off. It is not sending the signal or sending any information whatsoever from the atria to the ventricles. So the atrias are just up here doing their thing, the ventricles are down here doing their thing, but there's no correlation between the two. So when you see them on an EKG, they have no relationship. How do we know this is taking place? Well, first of all, you can do your R to R interval because that's what we know first. When you look at your rate, you've got a rate of 30. Um, you have a QR, QRS interval right here. And if you bounce the ball, the QRS is constant. So your R to R is equal, R is regular, but if you look at the PR, you look at this one, you're like, wow, that's ridiculous. And then you look here and you're like, oh, well, that's weird. That's a little closer together. We know they don't get closer together. We know that they do. Um, the other way around if it's a winky bock and if you look here well this one's even closer so that can't be right so then you're like okay well let's take a look at the P waves these two sit right next to each other so we know that this is a P wave we know this is a P wave here we know this is a P wave here you've got all these extra P waves and guess what you have one that's buried in here but all these extra P waves and you're like I don't understand what's going on if you measure the P to the P and you measure it across, you will see that they march out. All right, sorry about that interruption. That was my husband calling me. Um, so we look at this and we're like, oh, well, this, if you look, none of that matches. But if you measure your P to P, you will see that they march out. So in, in this instance, you have the R to R that's regular, and you also have the P to P that's regular. But when you look at the PR interval, that PR interval has absolutely no correlation. You look here, and you compare it. Well, it's not supposed to get narrower. If it's going to do anything, it's going to get wider. So when you're looking at this, you're like, okay, this is a third degree heart block. There is absolutely no communication going on between the atrias and the ventricles. And re in reality, what's happening is the atrias are just doing their thing, thinking that the, the QRS is doing what they're supposed to. They have no idea that the AV and the bundle of Hiss have decided they're not going to tell, tell the ventricles anything. So it's kind of like mo mom and dad are getting played against each other. And then the the ventricles are down here and they're like, well, I don't know what's going on upstairs, but we're just going to fire at our rate. So they have their intrinsic rate. That's why the heart rate 
if you look at this one, the heart rate is so low because it's a rate of 30, it's low because it's, it's beating against that intrinsic rate you would expect from the, let me see if I can get this on here, the intrinsic rate of the ventricles. So you're looking at those Purkinje fibers and their intrinsic rate of 20 to 40. So your third degree heart blocks are going to be bradycardic if you wanted to refer to it that way. Um, the other thing to kind of take note of here is if we use the husband and wife analogy, the atria is there's your wife, your wife got fed up with all the money issues and all the financial problems so she divorced the husband. So the, the wife is, is going through life doing her thing and guess what the, the QRS, the, the husbands are doing. The husbands, the divorced man, is also doing his thing. So you see the R to R intervals are regular, the P to P's are regular, but there's absolutely no communication between the two. So that's how you come up with a third degree heart block and it is the worst of the heart blocks. So if you have any questions, give me a shout in class. Otherwise, we'll talk to you soon.